Conversation next with Zweli Martin Lamini, Managing Editor of Swaziland News. Activists in Eswatini have condemned the guilty verdict on incarcerated pro-democracy um, members of parliament, Mtuduzi Mabuza, as well as Mtande Nidube. The two MPs were demanding democratic reforms in the country and were arrested on politically motivated terrorism charges, and uh, they face up to 20 years in a prison. Zweli Martin Lamini now joining us on the line. Zweli, good afternoon. Thank you so much for making time. For us. So with this verdict that has been handed down, what did the court say? Uh, thank you. Thank you, Adrian, for having me. Uh, it's true. Uh, yesterday, um, the High Court of Swatini uh, handed down a verdict uh, uh, whereby two pro-democracy MPs, Mdutuza Bakrete Mabuza and Mtanden Dube, were found guilty of terrorism, sedition and other related charges. Um, as you might be aware, perhaps let me start by contextualizing the events in which uh, they unfold before their arrest around June 2021. These MPs were demanding democracy inside parliament. But what happened thereafter, uh, the state, in fact, it was an order from King Umswati who ordered the police to arrest them because uh, they were demanding that the people of Eswatini must be allowed to at least elect a prime minister. As you might be aware, in Eswatini, it is ruled by Mswati as an absolute monarch. In fact, he's a dictator. Uh, all the powers of the state, the executive, the judiciary, and, um, and the legislator are vested upon him. So that's, that's where the problem starts, Adrian. Yeah, and we remember all of those protests that were taking place and the intervention by SEDEC, but we'll come back to the SEDEC aspect. But I just want to deal quickly with what the court um, said and also now this guilty verdict around um, terrorism. Uh, the court um, concluded that uh, they committed terrorism. In fact, the, the terrorism laws in Swaziland, they are too broad in such a way that uh, they undermine freedom of expression, including the freedom of the media. And in this regard, as you might be aware, these MPs uh, were exercising their rights. In fact, in terms of the Parliamentary Privileges Act, uh, whereby they were raising these issues inside parliament, but subsequently, uh, they then held press conferences where they were updating the people uh, regarding the events that were unfolding in parliament. So that's where the state comes in. They, they then charged them with terrorism, uh, whereby they were accused of inciting violence, the death of the people that happened thereafter. As you might be aware, um, the people were killed in Swaziland by the police and the soldiers. And then the state is now, was alleging that those killings were as a result of these two MPs. And in fact, another one who then fled to exile by the name of um, Tutuzi uh, Makaukau Simelane. The state then accused them of inciting the people to rebel against the state. And by so doing, they committed a uh, sedition, as the state alleges. And uh, uh, in addition to the charge of sedition, they were charged with terrorism. So all, all the charges, they were found guilty by uh, Judge Mamsi Ilamin yesterday. And this has been widely condemned by uh, the civil society and political parties in Swaziland. Because uh, these two MPs, uh, they are somehow now uh, the face of uh, the demands for democracy because they were acting on the behalf of the people who are demanding democracy in Swaziland. But uh, King Omswati seemingly is a hell bent to suppress dissenting views. What does this do, um, if anything at all, to the elections that are coming up in September? Uh, Edwin, uh, this judgment is in fact uh, a, a violation of the people's right to vote. And if you can just uh, uh, analyze it in the context of the doctrine of separation of powers, in fact, we are seeing the, the, the judiciary uh, invading parliament to arrest parliament and silence parliament. And this whole uh, judgment, if you read, if you read it in its entire form, it suggests that now the, the, the judiciary is uh, uh, silencing parliament and by extension silencing the voices of the people through the ballot box. Because if you can 
if, if you can imagine MPs who were exercising their right on behalf of the people, speaking, demanding democracy, which is not a new demand. This has been years uh, where people have been demanding democracy in Swaziland. It's just that now um, the demands were then discussed in parliament. So th- these coming elections now, it suggests that even if the people can elect members of parliament, uh, those people risk being arrested and charged with terrorism if they dare raise uh, such issues in parliament. And then uh, uh, it then tells you that all the powers of the state in Swaziland are centered uh, around a uh, one man, which is King Mswat. If he can decide that today you must be arrested for what we have spoken in parliament, and then the police will do so. It then undermines and or turn the legitimacy uh, of the Tingunla elections as per uh, the sentiments of other political parties in Swaziland who were banned in 1973. Then in 2021, during the height of the protests that were the pro-democracy protests that were taking place, Zedek took a decision um, that a special envoy would be deployed there um, and President Salah Ramaphosa made the announcement of who those people would be. Um, what has happened since then and also taking into consideration that um, earlier on this year in February when um, Zedek held its troika, they spoke about condemning the killings as well as the damage of property in the kingdom as well as condemning the killing of Tulani Rudolf Maseko. I uh, thank you Adrian for touching that matter. Um in fact Sadak did release a, a report and and that report carries recommendations suggesting that uh, in fact it's a, it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a framework of the dialogue, how the dialogue could be held in Swaziland, and what Mswati did thereafter, he delayed, as you as you read in other news platforms, international, including South Africa, he was avoiding some of the Sadak summits that seek to discuss the political crisis in Swaziland, and in fact, with the intention of delaying, so that he can hold elections. Then uh, those elections, he seeks to prolong his Tinkunza stay in power. And then Salak is, is trying because you must understand that uh, even though South Africa and other South African countries uh, seem to be eager to see the uh, crisis in Swaziland resolved, but uh, there are some diplomatic diplomatic processes that needs to be followed in this regard. Uh, so Sadak is just uh, for now following that diplomacy that it must be uh, the people of Swaziland and the government who demonstrate the desire to engage in a political dialogue. But of course, uh, Adrian, if those diplomatic processes fail, um, so it is seem to, as it is as it's doing now, uh, disregarding the international uh, democracy Democratic principles and try to impose uh, his uh, things and democratic elections. Uh, other other institutions uh, in Africa, including the African Union. In fact, just now I was reading that uh, the African Commission has adopted some of the resolutions whereby the civil society is demanding that the issue of Swaziland must be taken into consideration. So I think, uh, Edwin, uh, coming back to your question, we might see the demands internationally intensifying to force Mswati uh, to hold a political dialogue with the civil society. Of course, even the United States and the EU uh, seemingly is preparing sanctions, targeted sanctions against those who are violating human rights in Swaziland.